Third Sky parents, so we had our first uh, orchestra meeting today, this morning. The intermediates came at 7.40 and the beginners came at 8.20. We're going to be doing that every Monday and Wednesday mornings, okay? So I want to create these videos for you guys so you know what to do to help your kids at home practice and do what they need to do to be successful. So we had a plethora of violins in orchestra as we always do. We had some fabulous violas and then we had three cellos. So I'm going to be making a video about what we went through in class and what they need to be practicing for next Wednesday. Now, like I said at the beginning, normally I would see you guys on Monday. However, because it's Labor Day, the school is closed. So I will see you next Wednesday morning, intermediates at 740 and beginners at 820. If you guys could get there five minutes early before your time, so you could set up and we could start right on time. That would be fabulous, okay? So one of the basic things that we went over today is actually holding the instrument. Now with all my violins and violas, I'm actually gonna have them stand. The reason being when you're learning how to uh, play the violin, sitting can be really cumbersome for the body. It can actually really distort the lower back too. So it's just healthier for them in general we remain standing for right now, okay? So, the first thing I want them to know is rest position. We go across the body under the right arm, all right? And we just hold it like this. Gives me room to move my hands, all kinds of fun things. Now, as you kids will remember, I want you guys in rest position when I'm speaking and when I'm working with, you know, other sections of the orchestra or just kind of when we're hanging out. All right, so in this position, I know you can't see it. I'm gonna work on that. My feet are together, so they are touching. I want everyone to stand like this in rest position with the violin under their right armpit, right arm across, touching their tummy, and their feet together. Now, there are six steps to going to play position, okay? Remember, the first step is to move that little toe and move it to the side, just an itty bitty bit. It's about that far apart or where the hip joints are, okay? Remember, we don't wanna go too far because then we got problems with you know, our lower back as well. So just a little bit, what's called an athletic stance. The second step is with your left hand. I want you to come over on the other side Okay, on the violin's left shoulder and grab it on its left shoulder. All right, the third step is to take the violin out, violin or viola, out and hold it like this to the left. Then you're going to turn it counterclockwise, that's the fourth step, till it's upside down. Okay, then fifth step, you look to your left, so you look at the instrument the sixth step, you put it under your chin, all right? Notice I have a shoulder rest here. I fit all of your students with shoulder rests or sponges. And that really depended upon um, how long the child's neck was from the top of their collarbone or the top of their trapezius muscle to the bottom of their jaw, okay? So their jaw goes along the edge of their chin rest. It's a little bit of a misnomer, but it is a chin rest. This part of your body goes along there. So as you're helping them at home, you can use the button right there and you plug it in to the side of their jaw to help them. Now, another thing you should notice, you should be able to hold it without any hands. Okay, we had some great um, length of holding for a lot of the students, they held it for a really long time and that's excellent, okay? You should also be able to talk. See, I'm not gonna sound like she at all. If I do that, I'm gonna give myself a temporal headache right here. It's not gonna be fun, okay? So you can still talk. The other thing I want you as parents to help me with is make sure that the violin is parallel with the ceiling or the floor. 
okay? So it should go out straight. For students, if you look at the tip of your nose and then look at the scroll, you'll notice that it looks like it's on the same level. Parents, it will not be on the same level. If it's doing that, it'll grind into their collarbone and they'll tell you that it hurts. So if they're complaining about pain, it's probably because they're just pushing too hard with their head, okay? So you turn and you just allow your head to rest very gently on the shin rest, okay? I want you guys to do this several times a day, all right? Before school, after school, hold it for five seconds at a time. I would like at least five times, okay? So it's 25 seconds total of just holding it. So what you'll do is you go back to rest position, feet together. You'll do your first step. So you're gonna move your foot, left hand on the left shoulder, out, upside down, look to your right, uh, sorry, look to your left, under your chin, make sure it's comfy, let go, okay? Careful, a lot of kids when they start doing this, they wanna do this with their back, with their lower back, all right? This is gonna cause a lot of lower back pain, so we wanna watch out for that. If anything, their back should be back. Parents, if you notice this, what you can do is put your hand here and ask them to bring their lower back to your hand and maintain it there. The child will probably tell you feel like they feel like they're falling forward, and that's just because they're so used to being back here. So once we elongate, it really helps their back. And so I'm not saying that anyone can't play this way. They totally can. But the issue comes when you're my age. And when you're older, it really hurts your system. Okay, so that's the number one thing we practice today. And it's very, very important. So as I put my violin down, I'm gonna get my bow. All right? Now, I'm still with violins and violas. This is our bow, okay? With your left hand, I had them reach around the horse hair. You don't really wanna to touch the horse hair too much because it's just like normal hair. If you touch it too much, it's gonna get really greasy and we're gonna to have to change out the hair, okay? So, you're gonna hold it like this. The hair goes towards the left side as your fingers reach around. The frog here, okay? So then you're gonna make a bunny. Now bunny is like a reverse Spock. So it's this way. Then with your thumb, you're gonna bend your thumb and curl your fingers and they're gonna go on the very first line. Okay, the very first knuckle. So it's gonna roll over, be like a little soft curled bunny's nose. All right, good. So then you bring the bow up, open the bunny's mouth. For right now, I want the students to place their thumb on the silver portion of the ferrule. The, then they just drop all their other fingers. These two, the middle two right here, stay together. And then there's a little space between the index finger and the pinky, okay? Then the next step and the final step is just pull the pinky up on top. And as you'll see here, it's right on top, okay? That's exactly how I want your bow grip. Thumb on the bottom, nice and bent. There should be a hole here. All right, we're gonna go over the importance of that hole next Wednesday, okay? But just like that, I want 10 bow grips a day. So that's every single day until I see you next. So all we do is hold it with our left hand, bunny, drop, pinky, bow grip. And just hold it just like that, okay? should be super soft. The stick should hit the finger between that joint and that joint. So the middle section of our finger. All right, good. So the reason I want the thumb on the outside just for right now is because it's a little bit easier for itty bitty hands to be soft, all right? So along with the structure that we want, we want the hand to be super soft kind of like a cat, right? If you've ever held a cat, you know that they're just kind of squishy. They just, they don't really have bones, they're kind of wiggly, they're squishy. I want the bow grip to be the same thing. The bow will not fall. If the hand looks like this and the hand is soft, the bow will not fall. If you move the fingers, the bow will fall, 
okay? So we want it super soft. It's a little bit easier for your kids to have the thumb on the outside for right now to get that softness in their hand. Around Christmas or the holidays, we're going to move that thumb to the inside, all right? That's a professional bow grip. This is also called the Franco-Belgian bow grip if you want to look it up online. All right, this is the standard bow grip for all professionals. All joints should be bent at all times. And then we'll do some more fun things with the bow. Now, the other thing to know about the bow, it's one of the hardest things we've got for the instrument. So I want to start it really early. We will learn to pluck first. So we'll, bow, we'll make sound by plucking and then we'll learn to bow, but I want to get everyone started with practicing that motion so it's really strong when we do it. That is a pluck, and we'll learn to do that next week, okay? Now, for my cellist, okay, there are some great resources for you guys on the Sound Innovations website. So if you go to Alfred Music and you plug in the little barcode on the back, of your music, there's a little number, and you'll get access to all these wonderful videos. I don't have a cello to show you, but I'm gonna do my very best, okay? The video's on there. There's also in the book, if you go to page 11, you'll see how to hold the bow with a pencil. Now, a lot of the same bow stuff we just did for the violins and violas definitely counts, okay? And we went over it in class. So let's do it a little bit right now. This is still a violin bow. A cello bow is much bigger, all right? So you're gonna kind of hold it here with your left hand again. You're still gonna do bunny. I still like bunny. And you're gonna drop your hand over. It's just gonna hang, okay? You're then gonna place your thumb on the inside. Tip of the thumb on the inside and everything else just hangs. And that's it. That is a cello bow. Pinky does not go on top. Violin and viola, pinky goes on top. Cello, because we're holding it horizontally, it goes here. Now, same thing though, every joint should be bent. If we're hyperextending, you see how that closes off the space there? It's going to hurt the hand as you get older. We want to prevent all injury for the students, so that starts now. I want that thumb bent on the inside and you're just going to hang out there. You can practice it with kind of it resting on your body. So I'm going to lean up against the wall and show you and just hang out there. But that's exactly what a cello bow grip is. Okay. Once again, you can see that on your page 11 in your book. It's going to be with a pencil. You can still do it with the bow, totally with the bow. Um, and then we need to talk about placement of the cello, okay? You guys have that great end pin out. So we did some end pin placement in class, but they have to do it every time they get the instrument out, every single time. So you need to find a chair in your home which allows your knees to have a 90 degree angle to them, okay? So you're really flat in the chair. Chair placement is really important, once again, to protect your lower back, okay? So if I get down on the wall a little bit, all right? So you're gonna be like that. Your feet are gonna be wide apart, about that wide, okay? About shoulder width for each person, maybe a little bit larger. I prefer to have the feet right across from each other so they're parallel. Now in the book, they may stagger them and that's okay, they still need to be wide though, all right? So the cello, remember, so that first peg, this part on your cello, they're much larger, but right here, should go right by your ear. We don't want to stick it in our ear for sure, but they need to go right by our ear, okay? And then the bottom of the cello should be right on that outside of your thigh, right there, okay, right on the knee, all right? So once again, if you go to the Sound Innovations website, they have videos of a professional cellist showing you exactly what you need to do. I will add links to the email in which I send this video out of the videos there, okay? You need to put the code in on the back of your book and you'll have full access to that. You can also see that on page three, 
You can also see playing position, okay, and how you're supposed to hold the cello while you're playing. And we talked about that. There's a difference between rest and kind of just putting it up there and have it playing. Playing it should be right at your sternum. You should feel the back knob right at the neck here, right in our sternum, okay? All right, guys. So, parents, please know that if you have ever have any questions, come email me, call me, whatever you need, I am here for you. Also, I am giving all students a free 30-minute lesson, viola, violin, cello, everyone, so we can um, assess individual goals, we can set up what they need and what they want to achieve, um, and talk about the possibility of private lessons, not necessarily with me, but just in general and the importance of those. Okay? So I look forward to seeing you guys next Wednesday. Bye.